Hello everyone, I'm the Urban Dragon Trainer, and today I would like to talk about the reptile brain. First of all, scientific developments regarding the structure of reptilian brains have revealed more possibilities than ever imagined. Reptiles and mammals are the only species discovered to have a cerebral cortex that has a clear three-layer structure. This is similar to those found in the aleocortex of primates. While more simply structured than, the, than that of the six-layer structures found in the primate aleocortex, this could still prove to be enough cerebral complexion to allow a degree of cognitive function. The ventral pallium in the reptile brain also contains a dorsal ventricular ridge. This is the same structure found in the pallium of birds, which is responsible for their complex cognitive abilities. With these developments in mind, I would now like to discuss reptilian cognitive abilities, or their capacity to solve problems. For example, simple yet unnaturally occurring puzzles, and making mathematical evaluations, such as ratio comparisons. Now as far as solving puzzles, no, your monitor isn't going to be solving any Rubik's Cubes. However, they have shown the ability to work through simple processes to access food like getting insects out of containers by removing the lids, or turning a cylinder with a single hole and manipulating prey to fall out. When provided an option between two food containers filled with the same prey, but different amounts, reptiles will consistently select the largest portion with ease, even with minimal difference between portions. This ability to quickly make ratio evaluations even exceeds that of some birds and mammals who have been introduced to the same test. Developments currently being made at Florida's Gatorland involving the training of crocodilians are revealing new insights into reptile behavior involving cognitive abilities every day. These crocodilians in their facility respond extremely well to verbal and visual commands, exceeding even my expectations with how quickly they learn and retain controlled behaviors. During training, crocodiles and alligators alike have exhibited the ability to retain and consistently respond to a variety of verbal and tapping cues, as well as visual signals, such as recognizing feeding cues, coming when called, recognizing their names and responding to commands individually while in large groups, targeting or holding a position on cue, even returning to the water on command, Keep in mind, this training has proven successful with reptiles that instinctively view us as prey, which to me is amazing enough. Now, in my own observations over the years, I have had several reptiles respond very well to certain aspects of training and behavioral modification. Lizards of several species tend to respond quickly to and remember, remember several verbal cues, such as name recognition, coming when called, or responding to recall commands, uh, returning to their enclosure, recognizing no or a halt command, positioning or staying on command, and even searching for a target on command. Tortoise species and aquatic turtles have also exhibited consistent responses to similar cues and training with aquatic turtles responding better to tapping cues while in the water, but exhibiting consistent responses to verbal cues once on land. Snakes have even shown the ability to respond to tap cues and visual signals, exhibiting the same command retention and ability to perform controlled behaviors as their lizard and turtle counterparts. These insights into reptile behavior would suggest a definitive presence of cognitive ability in reptiles collectively though the rate at which they develop proper responses and retain cues differs between species, indicating the level of intelligence may differ from one species to the next, all reptiles still exhibit some level of cognitive ability, meaning they may be far more sentient than presumed. I would now like to point out social behaviors observed in groups of reptiles that further suggest some level of sentience. Reptiles of every species have been found to utilize a variety of communicative methods, such as scent communication, using pheromones or musk scents to communicate a willingness to mate or territorial boundaries, 
Now, to better understand reptiles from a behavioral perspective, we look more at their other forms of communication. Complex social structures are observed naturally in several reptile species. For example, Nile crocodiles, American alligators, Asian water monitors, and Komodo dragons all live in densely populated groups and display social structures and communicative behaviors within these groups. Throughout these social groups, visual, vocal, and physical communication can be observed. Similar social structures and communicative behaviors can develop between reptiles that aren't naturally social when kept in, group, when kept in groups in captivity, like savanna monitors, tegus, uh, even bearded dragons have shown the ability and exhibited social structures when kept in groups in captivity. Crocodilians utilize visual displays, such as gaping their mouths, raising their snouts, arching their backs or tails, and jaw popping, which can also be felt and heard in the water. Their physical cues consist mostly of swimming above one another with specific postures and snout nudging. However, nudging different regions of the body seems to communicate different signals. Crocodilians' vocal communication is the most diverse among reptiles. They use a wide range of different pitched bellows and hisses as mating calls, territorial displays, and for establishing a presence when approaching a group that's feeding. Monitors. Monitors tend to utilize visual displays such as head tilting, puffing up their neck or belly, scratching the ground, curling their tails, and gaping their mouths. They will use physical cues like nudging each other with their nose, uh, scratching one another, laying on each other with specific ways or postures, uh, tail whipping, and even gentle biting. As far as vocalizations, monitors seem limited to hisses. However, different pitches and lengths in hisses appear to be utilized in different situations. Now, lizards such as iguanas or bearded dragons add to these communicative behaviors with head bobbing, which, as basic as it sounds, is actually a rather sophisticated means of communication. Using different patterns of bobbing and different body postures while doing so, they communicate a surprisingly wide range of intentions, such as aggression and territorial displays, or greetings and even mating displays. Chameleons take visual communication even further by utilizing their color-changing abilities to communicate a similar variety of intentions and messages to other species of their prey, or other species, other members of their species. Sorry. Turtles and tortoises also display communicative behaviors and social structures in groups, using signals like shell tilting, nudging, and scratching or tapping with their front feet. Even snakes display a range of physical and visual communicative behaviors during social interactions, lifting their heads and swaying, nudging and pushing one another with different parts of their body, or laying on each other in specific ways. However, with minimal cohabitation and little social interactions observed aside from breeding, knowledge of snakes' social behaviors is limited. Although similar social behaviors to those observed in their lizard counterparts could be possible since they have very similar brain structures and similar mental capacity. Overall, the presence of these social structures among reptiles and the behavior they involve provides insight into their cognitive capacity to understand communicative cues. The ability of reptiles that are naturally solitary to develop these social structures suggests a com collective capacity to understand these cues. Next, I would like to discuss possibly the most controversial topic regarding reptiles, their emotions. Yes, with recognition of cognitive ability and sentient behavior also comes the recognition of emotions experienced by such beings, such as comfort, excitement, fondness of individuals, irritation, disdain, and even depression. As reptile keepers and enthusiasts, we have all seen evidence of emotional responses to stimuli. Whether we recognize it as emotion or blanket it under a general term such as stress. The term stress itself fits the definition of an emotional response. 
Reptiles exhibit clear signs of depression following drastic environmental changes, with some wild captured species refusing to breed in perfectly replicated environments, or even dying in captivity. Certain reptiles will refuse food, become inactive, and display increased aggression during these periods of change, sometimes to the extent that their health declines. Captive reptiles have displayed these symptoms of depression after the loss of a long-term mate. They have also been, been observed displaying excitement toward their handlers or showing greater excitement for one food source over another. They can also exhibit social preferences, favoring the presence of one handler over another, even having equal time and attention from the prospective handlers. They have the ability to hold a grudge or remember a negative experience and display fear or aggression towards the handlers or surroundings associated with those experiences, even after a long period of time has passed. Certain reptiles, specifically large lizards, will even display playful behavior when given unfamiliar objects, such as a large ball or paper bag. They have also been observed on several occasions playing with stuffed animals, gloves, or shoes which can be considered both a sign of cognitive function and a sign of the presence of excitability or joyful emotions which are stimulated by this behavior. This is not to say reptiles experience the same range of emotions that we associate with primates. However, it is clear evidence suggesting the presence of similar sentient emotions, ultimately meaning reptiles are capable of developing an emotional bond with their keepers and could ultimately benefit from the development of such a bond, as opposed to a more solitary, less stimulated captive lifestyle. If you've stayed with me this long, you're probably wondering where I'm going with all these points. As a behaviorist, Understanding these aspects of their mind helps me determine which training approaches they will be the most receptive to. This coupled with the knowledge of their natural and social behavior is what helps us develop successful training methods for specific species. These insights also help gauge progress during training and determine potential limitations. As a reptile enthusiast and keeper, this deeper understanding of their behavior and mental capacity leads me to realize reptiles live far too sedentary lives in captivity. It is far too common practice to assume adequate care simply involves enclosure size, temperature, humidity, and dietary needs, when proper enrichment and mental stimulation should be as much a part of reptile care as it is mammalian or avian care. Captive life is a stressful situation for any wild animal. By building trust and providing proper mental and physical activities, we are also aiding the animal's ability to adapt and developing coping mechanisms for the unnatural stressors of captive life. For example, teaching a high energy dog fetch as an outlet is effectively teaching them a positive coping mechanism. I believe a similar concept should be applied to caring for our captive reptiles. Simply building trust and developing a proper handling routine can reduce the stress caused by our presence and that of others who may observe the animal. Target training can encourage more activity, which in turn can help prevent obesity, which is a very common problem in captive reptiles. Training them to a feeding cue can make enclosure maintenance and cleaning less stressful for you and your animal. This will also make handling safer, which will allow more opportunities for a wide range of enrichment. Stimulating their curiosity by having an, ar an area outside of their enclosure to roam, containing new decor and things to investigate regularly, will also encourage them to be more active and help prevent the development of sedentary behaviors. Providing these beneficial forms of training and enrichment can ultimately improve the overall quality life, quality of life for captive reptiles. Finally, I would like to leave you with this. There is still so much we don't understand about the behavior and mental capabilities of reptiles. We learn more every day, and we can only hope as keepers and as reptile enthusiasts and as the reptile community to change and improve our care and understanding as new insights unfold. 
I'm the Urban Dragon Trainer. These have been my thoughts on reptile cognition. If you haven't subscribed, please do. More training with Blue to come. Thanks for listening.